Okay, so recently I've been doing some structural and architectural elements. One of the reasons why I've wanted to do some artwork like this is because I've been heavily inspired by prefabricated buildings and container houses recently. So just to show you what I mean, if we swap over to this pure ref file I have, I really, really like the design of container buildings. There's something about their modular structure and how rugged they are in terms of materials that I just think looks really cool and much more interesting than traditional housing. And the cool thing about structures like this it's because they're modular and they're made out of quite simple pieces, they're extremely easy to model and put together. So just for a bit of fun, and it's something that I might share with other people in the future, I've been starting to put together a bit of a kit bash library for the kinds of materials that you would see in container buildings. So this includes things like eye beams and connecting joints, but I'm still yet to make the actual container pieces, but I wanted to make this video just to show you what I've been doing so far. Now the work that I'm showing you here is from I think about a month ago. Basically what I did was I made myself a collection of foundation pieces, which I could quickly use to rapidly prototype new scenes. As we can see here, I started doing some very basic artwork using the eye beams and connecting pieces to make some very basic structures. I was tempted to make a piece of artwork here with some kind of portal and someone like uh, wanting to go through. But moving on, I wanted to try brightening things up a bit because I work in the dark quite a lot, so to speak. And I really wanted to show off more of the structural potential. So I lowered the floor and raised the ceiling and gave these structural kit bash pieces more time to shine. And the reason why when building modular sets, I like sketching out scenes, even when I've only got a limited number of pieces, is because it can give you a good direction and inform you what pieces to make next. But at this moment in the day, I remember I was bored and I just thought, sod it, I've got a few pieces, let's make a piece of artwork with it. So moving on to the next image, I slapped on one of the iron materials from my modular metals pack, as well as my ambient grunge node. And the immediate results were quite nice. I had a bit of extra lighting coming in from the left, but I thought it was a bit basic and a bit repetitive. So then I kind of ran with the idea of maybe having this as like an unfinished level of a building under construction, where maybe there'd be a balcony going out the side here. So I removed these back wall pieces and these side pieces. Running with that idea, I added a kind of panorama to the background, and I was starting to feel quite nice about the mood of this, but I didn't own the copyright for the image. So I thought, hey, that's fun, but let's move on to something else. Now because everything was so right angular, I wanted to add some cylindrical ventilation going around and I'll show you how I made this in a minute. And then like I said, kind of running with the idea of having a balcony going out the side there, I did a few glass pieces and extended the floor a bit. But ultimately I hit a bit of a roadblock because I just didn't like what I was looking at, so I ended up reverting back to my traditional dark and colourful style. Obviously there's quite a large jump between these two, but I'll explain more of the full process as we go. And finally over here we have a slightly different lighting and a bit more post-process version. Taking a look at this file here, which is available on the third tier of the Patreon, you can see how messy it is because I've got all of these leftover pieces from unfinished ideas. But I guess that goes to show how rapidly you can prototype new scenes by using modular pieces. So you can see how we can easily select new pieces and joints and just duplicate them and move them about to create new structures. As for the ventilation, if we come over to my main piece file, these are made by using just basic NURBS paths. So if I press Shift A, go to Curve and then Path, go into Edit Mode and we can see our points here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this point maybe down here, this one to this part of the grid. So we've got a bit of a curve going. Let me extend this one out a bit more. And then in the curves options here, if we increase the depth, we end up with a cylindrical shape. Now this is good for if you wanted to do all kinds of joints and having it curve around in any direction because it's very uniform. But I think kind of extruded cylindrical vents are more interesting for reflecting light and taking up a bit more space in the scene. So you see the extrude value under geometry. If you drag that up, you can see how the shape changes. Now, if you keep everything to the grid, then it's very easy to basically turn these into modular pieces. So if I can duplicate this, rotate on the Z axis by 90 degrees, then you can keep snapping them together. They also have these small connecting details in between them. And one easy way to do this without just making a cylinder and extruding it is to take one of the pieces we've made, do the search function, convert to mesh, then we can basically make use of the geometry here. If I take this face ring, press P and separate the selection, Go into object mode and select it, then edit mode. I want to make sure that this edge ring here is lined up with the grid, one of these major segments here. Then I'm going to take the outer edge ring and extrude that out to the grid, and then select all of it, Alt E, and extrude face long normals. Then I want to quickly go into the mesh settings, then under normals, tick auto smooth. So that's a quick way you can make a bit of a connecting edge and provided that the origin is in the right place, then if we duplicate and do 180 degrees on the Z, then it can be placed in exactly the right spot on the other side. So it's important keeping everything to the grid if you want to be very modular with your pieces. Likewise, when it comes to rotational snapping, make sure your origin is at a point where rotation would make sense. So for example, the origin for this piece here is out in the middle. So if I rotate along the X, you can see as we approach 90 degrees, it's going to slot right into the correct space. 
and if you wanted to do it on the other side and above, then that would fit perfectly as well. Alternatively, having the origin down here, somewhere around this area, would work as well, because that would also rotate along that point and slot down into the right space. Taking a look at all of the structural pieces for the I-beams and the connecting points, you can see that the origins have been placed in pretty sensible locations as well. So for the I-beams, the origins are at the base, so I can move it along and rotate it from the very end, like that. And for the connecting joints, these are placed at identical locations to where the origins for the I-beams would be. So we can easily snap these together. For example, if I take an I-beam and raise it up, then if I put the 3D cursor to that position, take a connecting joint and put it in a random place, then I can snap this to the 3D cursor, and it's going to be in exactly the correct spot. Then I can take the I-beam again, duplicate it and rotate it 180 degrees on the Z-axis, and then we end up with the next piece. So again, if I take these two, duplicate and do 90, then there we go, they fit in the gap perfectly. Now from an artistic standpoint, what's nice about having these smaller, finer details where pieces connect, is that it actually provides a very significant addition to the visual interest of the scene. Overall, it's nice to have a distribution of small, medium and large details, but small details that are grounded in reality in some way really help to sell a sense of believability. And I think rivets are a bit of an easy cop out for doing that. And that's because not only are they a bit of a trope and a cliche for structural connectivity, but they are actually genuinely used all over the place. So just for a visual demonstration, I've come into Google Maps here into London, which is my home city. We've got the shard up there. Now above us here is a bridge that the rail line will go over, but if we come under and have a look up, we can see how the beams are connected to different pieces and how many rivets there are just going all the way along. Like I said, simple small details in the right places can really help to sell a sense of believability. Now talking about believability, we can push the limits a bit, because I wanted this ventilation to be not entirely connected to the ceiling, almost as if that the structure was incomplete. And I thought, wait, hold on, it's not going to make sense if this ventilation is just floating in the air, so I need a way to keep it suspended. So I made these kind of metallic suspension lines here to try and keep it afloat. Again, nothing too complex, and it's a bit of a cop-out, but I think it just adds a bit more of that believability. Now realistically, because all of the origins are in the right places for these objects, you could probably put together a basic layout for this scene in about, well, maybe five minutes. And then strictly speaking, with that in mind, it stands to reason that you could write a generation script that could make scenes like this in a relatively short amount of time. So maybe that's something I'll try in the future if I just want to have a bit of fun. Now let's talk a bit more about the visual styling for this last piece when compared to the earlier ones. There are two main inspirations I have for this, which are Airports and Mirror's Edge. Mirror's Edge is one of my favorite game series. The games basically consist of you parkouring your way through various city environments. And there was something extremely pleasant I liked about the first game, but the environments felt both super clean and new, and yet used at the same time. Like the grime was always in the right places. And there were elements from that game where you would spend so much time outside in the open air in the city, that when you finally entered an interior, it felt so strange and different. Like everything was completely fresh and minimal. Now in that game, the original one anyway, they were very careful with the use of colour, and red was chosen specifically to be the colour that indicates the way to go. So while you were running around and maintaining your flow, as they called it, you would always have some kind of directionality. And that colour choice always seemed to serve a double purpose. Not only was it used for direction, but those coloured elements also decorated the scene. So that's why here I tried to go for a bit of a limited colour set. I've got red down the bottom here and green going along the top. I kind of imagine this being like an airport terminal where people have walked their way to the gate. There's a waiting area and the light is coming from the outside where the plane is waiting. And perhaps the green line going across the wall here is an indication of the direction to the gate. Along the walls we can see that things are mostly clean and untouched, but there's this kind of layer of grime that's creeping in from the edges. And that's to kind of give this juxtaposition that even though things are seemingly incomplete and unfinished, like they're brand new and still being made, it's still being lived in. And I don't know what it is, but something about that contrast is just a mood that I find really interesting. Now I'll probably come back to this project and carry on with it at some point in the future, doing all kinds of different pieces of artwork, probably making actual container buildings. Whether or not I show any of it on the channel if I do that, we'll have to wait and see. But I was thoughtful enough to leave some information for myself the first time around. I knew that if I did want to come back and keep making pieces to add to the collection, then I'd need a bit of guidance. So basically every piece I made, I did on the grid, and I made notes to myself for what kind of sizes I would want containers to be. So we can see here, I've left a note for myself that says container layout, 1 by 3 of 18 by 20 planes. 18 by 20 represents the number of squares on the grid. Now the measurements are uniform, so as I've got the eye beams going up here, we can see that I've got numbers underneath indicating their length. So this would be a 20 beam, and then we can go all the way down 15, 10, 8, 5, and 4. 
when I make different pieces, they are kept together as like a bit of a collection. So here I've got all of the joints together. Here I'll keep the ventilation pieces. So as I build more and more things, this kind of kit bash library will expand. And if I ever reach a point where I think it's substantial enough to share with other people, then I'll probably put it online, either on Gumroad, Blender Market or on Patreon. We'll see. Anyway, yeah, I just had this file laying around and I just wanted to share some thoughts and tips about modularity and prefab design. So hopefully you found this interesting. If you did, then feel free to do all the things that YouTubers usually ask you to do. Maybe check out my products, my website, the Patreon, or the new channel for the whole cast podcast if you're into discussion videos. I just released a new one on there about the benefits of procrastination, which I thought was a very interesting subject. Anyway, if you make any work like this yourself, so modular prefab architecture, then feel free to share it with me. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.